analogy this morning as he's working with the worship team. It's like herding cats. So, I heard a couple of meows in there too. So it's always good when God's people come together to fellowship and to worship together. Uh, before we look at some of the slide announcements, we have a couple of announcements that aren't uh, in the bulletin. Of course, you can come on that if you like. Uh, Amos and Bonnie Lawrence, as many of you know, lost their house in a fire. And so this Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Heartland Baptist Church, there's going to be kind of like a shower of some sort. And uh, Jenny has information on that. And Erica, you have information on that as well, correct? So, okay. So if you have any questions about that, that's at the gym, I believe, at the Heartland Baptist Church. Good morning, y'all. Many of you know that our pastor is involved with the Billy Graham evangelistic team's first responders uh, for counseling for people who lose <coughs> individuals, loved ones, whatever. Uh, our pastor has credentials uh, for this, but they need to be updated by additional training and uh, the SALT group within our church has agreed to help the pastor in uh, going to Kansas for additional training for this. We're very fortunate to have a gentleman with the capacities, the faculties, or the facilities, the Abilities. I'll finally find the word, you know, eventually, uh, to do this sort of thing. And it's advantageous for us as a church to have somebody within our group who is able to do this. And uh, we may not, well, we do have occasionally individuals who need help in counseling in this type of situation. So we as a church, the SALT team within our church, have agreed to help the pastor along the way as far as transportation to and from uh, the training area, which is in Kansas. Uh, and so we thought that we would throw it out to you if anybody within the church would like to help the church in helping him to go. This is between you and God. But whatever, if you wish, and if you'd like to make a check out, make it out to the church, St. Albert Union Church, and in the memo line of your check, just put Kansas, if you like, or the Kansas trip, anything to indicate that that's what it's for. Okay? May the Lord bless you all. Thank you. And thank you in advance for that. Uh, also, let's go to the slides. This Friday night will be our uh, talent night. And so if you have not signed up to be part of that, today's the last day to do so. If you simply want to observe and be a part and a cheerleader in that, come along. Friday night at 6 o'clock. And we'll have refreshments afterwards. Uh, men's retreats. We've got more men's retreats than we know about. Uh, this one will be taking place April 20. We'll have a video a little bit later here. Uh, Paul Reynolds, would you raise your hand, please? Paul's our contact person. If you're interested in going to this one, it's in Portland. The next one uh, is a men's retreat that's going to be at uh, Camp Fairhaven. Is Chuck in here? In the nursery? No, he's Oh, he's not. Okay. Well, Patty, raise your hand. She's not in charge, but her husband, her husband will be, okay? And she could direct you to her husband if you're interested in going to that, and uh, that, that will be a very uh, good retreat as well. So let's just do a quick clip for the uh, men's retreat to Portland.
the hope of the local church is its men. Raise your hand if you've been to Iron Shop and Zion before. It's a really great thing, um, having done it uh, once before. And uh, really, it's an enjoyable day. It's just a fantastic day to, to get away. At uh, one point, I don't... Did you notice where it said masculine worship? <laughs> I was pictured like this, sitting around lifting weights while they worship or something like that. <laughs> and then they're eating donuts, and then like, you know, really masculine stuff or something when they worship. They don't cry or anything when they worship. So, but uh, it is a fantastic time uh, to to really to to come together as men and to, to worship together, uh, to hear different speakers and, and that kind of stuff. Whether it's that uh, that retreat or the uh, one at Camp Fairhaven, um, it's May seventh. Like the men are doing a lot of retreating, but uh, it's all meant to just uh, to kind of like power up and uh, be ready to go out into the world and make a difference. Let's stand as we worship together again this morning. Our Lord and our Savior, who is indescribable. From the highest of heights to the depths of the
humbled by your love, by your grace, and by your mercy, Lord. Humbled that you call us your children. Father, I thank you for your love, for your mercy. We thank you for the blessings that you pour to have upon us. And in return, Lord, we sing to you and praise you. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
doing such a fantastic job and they're always kind of behind the scenes and behind you. You can all turn and just wave to Brad and Jeff and Desi up there. Thank you for everything you do up there. Don't mess up.
that we proclaim the truth, Lord, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way but through Him. Lord, I thank you as we even sung, blessed be your name, and what I found in whatever situation, blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for every blessing that you pour down upon us, even as, as we bring our tithes and offerings. We, we say thank you, Lord. But it is not only in this that we say thank you. We say thank you in every circumstance, in every moment. We need to be reminded to say thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. When the world's all as it should be, which seemingly oftentimes is never, except we need to trust you that you are in control. Lord, you've promised much to us in the sight. Even without that, just the fact that you love us and loved us before we even knew you. How could we not say thank you? How selfish and prideful would that be? I say, Lord, without you, I have nothing Everything I am is found in you. Help us today, Lord, to lift our hearts, our minds, our souls to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. We have the scripture from Lamentations. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts with our hands to God in the heavens. Even as we've already sung, turn again to the Lord. Lord, reign in me again. And this idea of lifting up our hearts with our hands. We're not really lifting our hands in worship. We are really lifting all that we are up to our God in heaven. Amen? He is the one we praise today. We stand and lift our hands before the joy.
recognize and acknowledge that you are our all in all. The whole earth is indeed filled with your glory. Everything we see all around us reminds us that you, O oh God, are the creator. You are the sustainer. And you sent your son Jesus to be our savior. Father, we would ask that even now as we prepare to hear your word, that your spirit would cause us to listen carefully to what you are saying to each one of us as individuals, and that we might walk out of here challenged, encouraged, reminded to live our lives for Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Children, if you would come forward, please.
other believers, basically. Uh, that was its intention, intentional, intended, excuse me, meaning. And that's why we can celebrate it. But we get to go one step further. As, belie as believers, we know that it goes one step further because it wasn't... It wasn't St. Patrick's or St. Patrick that we celebrate. We know that it's not about the man at all because we can do nothing in and of ourselves like what he did. It all comes from God. The love that he had for the Irish people, it came from God. The burden that he had to go and share the good news of Christ with those in Ireland was from God. All of Knowing that, even his own personal faith was from God. That was a gift from God, the Bible tells us in Ephesians, that even the faith that he had to go out and do those things and the burden was a gift of God. So we get to celebrate with everybody, but we get to celebrate something so much more meaningful than all the things that's come to, come to represent today. And we're going to look today... First, I'm, I'm going to share... A, a brief story about what he did, and then we're going to look at some other men of faith. Um, we know that God alone is worthy of the praise for all these things that were done through him, um, because God just used Patrick to reach the people of Ireland, just as he uses thousands of people today as missionaries, as pastors, as even each one of us as we're going about our daily routine and just making an impact by living our lives for Christ. He uses each one of us. Patrick was just a missionary. So he started out his, he, he was a teenager, about 14 years old, I think, when he was taken as a slave and he was brought to Ireland as a slave and he was supposed to tend sheep and herds and things like that. And while he was there, he had a, a dream that he was going to escape. So he went to the coast, like his dream said, and he got some sailors to let him board their ship, and he sailed back to uh, England, where he was from. And while in England, he studied and um, prayed, because while he was a captive, he sought God, and he, he accepted Christ as his Savior. And he went back to England and studied some more and grew closer and closer, and his faith grew while he was there. And he knew eventually that God was going to call him back to Ireland. And so he had this burden to go back to Ireland and share with all the people that were once his captives. He was going to go back and share with them the good news of Christ. Um, they lived, I think it was Druids they were called. And I always think of a Mel Brooks joke when I hear that. But they were, they were Druids. And so he went back and he was the first one to share Christ with them. He was, he was bold. In his witness, he was he was he was somebody that they looked at with respect. Because who else would come to the Druids in Ireland and share Christ with them? He had to have something special, and that thing that was special was his faith. He had very strong faith to be able to do that, and um, he spent about forty years, is what they think, about forty years. Sharing Christ, uh, establishing churches, and basically just planting churches and preaching the word to people. And that's that's much like what many, many, many of our missionaries do today. It's something something simple, but sometimes things get get kind of twisted. And I, I think if it was St. Patrick was here today, he would say. It wasn't about me at all. It was about what God was doing through me. And, and that's what we remember today. Um, he spent much of his life spreading the gospel and church planting. And as a, any missionary will tell you, it was God that did the work. He was just the tool that God used. And all honor and glory, I'm sure he would say, belong to God, not to him. Um, Patrick, like many of us, were that tool that that God could use each one of us to spread His Word and to impact a life somehow. A man of faith who surrendered his own desires and his own will to, to fulfill God's call in his life because of his faith. Today, we're going to look at a few other people that have done the same thing. A few other examples. And if you would, you can turn with me to Hebrews 11. 
And this is such an easy passage to, to speak out of because it's, it's so awesome to see the examples that we have throughout, throughout Scripture of people who live their lives fulfilling Christ's call in their life just completely on faith. So that's what we're going to look at, at today. People who are not afraid or ashamed of their faith they have the kind of faith that makes a difference. The kind of faith that affects those around them. The kind that, the kind that I want to have. The kind that spills over and makes an impact on all those people around us. Um, makes them want to know what it is that's different about us. The hope and the peace that we have. And that can only come from a close relationship with Jesus. But if you're all there, Hebrews 11, we're going to start right up in verse 1. Starting in verse 1, I'll read it. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That makes, it, it makes sense to us when we realize faith is believing something, right? It's not believing something that we see physically, These there's, like, that ceiling is white. We know that because we can see it. That doesn't require faith. Faith is believing in something that there's not this physical evidence right there in front of us, but we know because God gives us that faith. Um, let's see. Trick. In verse 1, it says that the faith is our assurance of things. Translated from the same Greek word here, assurance, is the same word that's used in chapter 3, verse, verse 14, and also translated to exact representation in chapter 1, verse 3. It's that, that, rep, that is our assurance. That's the exact thing that is our assurance of things to come, of Christ, and that His word is true. All of this is faith, and this is our assurance. Um, the faith described here is of the most solid possible conviction, the God-given assurance of things to come. It's the most, the thing you can grab onto and know that this is the truth, the most solid <coughs> conviction. The conviction of things not seen, it says. Well, that makes sense. If it's faith, we know that it's things not necessarily seen as physical evidence around us, but it's it's that evidence that we have because we know God's word to be true. Faith makes us know without a doubt, not because of the evidence, but on divine assurance, which is a gift of God, Ephesians tells us in chapter 2, verse 8. This faith is our assurance. Verse 3, it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. Now, <coughs> by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God. Were, were we there? Were any of us here in that time? No. I don't think so. We weren't, we weren't there to see God speak and mountains come up. Or God speak and, whoa, there goes a gazelle. Or something like that. We, didn't, we weren't there to see that actually happen. But we know that to be true by the faith that God gives us. And the faith that God gives us tells us that the Bible is true completely from beginning to end. So even though we weren't there, we, we can have we can be assured because of our faith that we know that's true. That God said it and it happened. That's the faith that we have. And it started way back then and it's going to continue until eternity, really. Uh, where was it? By faith we understand not because we were there, but because we trust God's word. We know that by faith, or we know by faith what the truth is. And now starting in verse 4, we see examples of people whose faith led them. So we're going to start in verse 4. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spend time on each one of these because there's so many examples. It's amazing. Um, starting in verse 4, by faith, Abel offered to God better sacrifices than Cain through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. Then, skip a little bit, and through faith, he is dead. Though he is dead, excuse me, he still speaks. 
By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. We'll skip a little bit more. By faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen. Again, there's that not yet seen. The things that we know are going to happen because God says so. The things, and, and we still have things like that today in our lives. We have that hope that there's something better than this world that we're in now. We have hope that things, though they might not get better here in our lifetime, ultimately they're going to be great because we're going to be with Jesus one day. The, the hope of things not yet seen because of his faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed. He obeyed and went out to a place that he didn't know, a place that was promised to him, and he just trusted God so much that he went out and he did exactly what God wanted him to do. And the list goes on, and the list goes on, and the list goes on. Nineteen times I counted last night. I might be maybe off by one or two, but I think it was nineteen times I counted by faith or through faith. These people did things that weren't comfortable. They did things that weren't expected by those around them. It was something that most people would be like, what? Why are you going to do that? And it's by faith. No, why are you building an ark? What are you talking about? The world's not going to flood. But because of faith, Noah obeyed. And he did what he was told to do. Because of his faith, he trusted God. Um, all the way down through, all the way down to verse 32, it talks about just a few people who, who trusted by faith and did these things by faith. And we're going we're gonna to pick it up again there. But first I wanted to say that it was by faith we see all these people doing things for the glory of God because they trusted Him. Uh, in obedience, they acted, they did what it was God would have them to do. And with perseverance, they followed through. I know, if, if anybody here is like me, I'm a guy, well, I'm a guy, that's it. So, I have a lot of projects at my house. I have countless projects. If you were to come over to my house and just take a look around, I have a little bit of everything, and not much of it is finished. I have, I don't know why, but I thought this sewing machine was pretty. And I thought I could fix it up. And I've never sewed. I've never done anything with a sewing machine before. But I thought, hey, I can, I can fix this up. And I can make this look awesome. And I have just countless stuff. I picked up a park bench. And it's beautiful. You'll see it someday when it's finished. I'll put it out in front of the house. But I picked it up because somebody threw it up and it was had broken pieces of wood. And I was like, oh yeah, that's easy. I can fix that. So I have... I have this, and that's another project. Jessie, she's, she's very gracious, and she forgives me when I come home with my park bench from the dump or something like that, that I can fix up. And all these projects that I have, but so many of them, I, I, I'm excited when I get started. I'm excited to start doing something like our house. And you notice that if you drive by, it's only about half painted. I started, but I, I get weary. I get tired of it. I get exhausted and want to move on to something different. I have trouble following through sometimes with what I start. But, but these men and women, they, they followed through. They didn't start something and just get bored with it and do something else, like buy a sewing machine. They didn't, they didn't get tired of doing something and look for something else to do. They spent their lives, think, think of Noah, how long it took him to build that ark. It wasn't on a whim that he decided to build a boat. It was an ark, and it was God told him to do it, so he did it, and he followed through. Despite what people thought, despite what people said, all these things working against him, and he still did it because God told him to do it. He followed through. And that's something that I think I can use as an example, just to follow through and finish what we start with, with all these things. And, and sometimes in our lives, God is moving us to do something. God is impressioning us to 
go talk to this person, or that person looks very lonely, they're there at lunch every day by themselves, you should go speak to them or sit with them. Somebody who might not have a whole lot of friends or just is down in the dumps, they, want, they, they just want somebody to talk to. And we can be that somebody. But oftentimes, especially when I was young and in school, I don't mind so much anymore, but when I was young and in school, I would be like, no, I don't want to talk to them. God, you can't mean that right now because this person likes me and I like that they like me. I don't want them to think I'm weird. Or this person doesn't like me, so why would I go talk to them? You know, it's, it's that, that fear sometimes that we let creep in. Or just thinking about what others might think or what others might say. But it doesn't matter what others say. With Noah, he was probably considered a crazy man for building that boat. But he did it anyway because God told him to. And God moved him to do that just like he might be telling us to go share with that person or go buy something for somebody, some groceries or something, or just, just doing something to help somebody else out, something to make an impact. And, and it's not weird to do those things. If we're following God, He's going to use that, and it's going to be for His glory, not for us, because for us it doesn't really matter. Our reward will be in heaven whether people acknowledge us here or not. And just, just to be willing to step up and trust God to take care of us and trust God to, enough to follow through and obey with what He says, or, or obey what He tells us to do, excuse me, and, and to do those things which He calls us to do. Um, moving on from that, we're going to look at verse 32. Because it gets even more and more and more. Um, it's, it's just amazing to me. I love this. As I was reading this last night, I was excited. I, was, I started in verse 32 and I was going over everything. But I was laying in bed and I kept telling Jesse, I hope I don't just rush through it all. Because it's so exciting to me. This part here. Um, and what more shall I say? He writes... For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jeff, I'll call him Jeff, because I don't remember how to pronounce that, Jeff and David, of Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting their release, so that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mockings and scourgings, yes, also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised at that time, but we can be assured that they have received their reward now. It doesn't matter what this world brings on us, as long as we are obedient to God, we stick to what we know He has given us to do, and we, we, we hold fast to that faith that we have, that trust that we have in Him, no matter what other things might come. We just trust Him and do what He wants us to do completely. And, and, and that's, that's what each one of us can do. Whatever it is God has for us, that's what we should be doing. It might not be going to Ireland and speaking to the Druids, because that's already done. That was checked off. But it might be going to, who knows, it could be going and starting a church in the parking lot at Denny's if, it, if that's what God wants us to do. We could have an outdoor church at Denny's. Who knows? Whatever, and, and that might sound weird, but if that's what God calls us to do, that's what we're to, go, we're, we're to be doing. Um, it could be just sharing with that person or living our lives so that the people on our 
basketball team or in clubs that we're part of or people at restaurants that we go to, our favorite restaurants. All these people can be impacted by the way we live our lives. And God will use that and use us to reach these people just like he used Patrick way back in the day for Ireland. All he did was exactly what God told him to do. He went out and he did the work and God used that and he used him to make a difference. <coughs> all because of his faith. Faith is the key with all of these people. That's what it's all about is their faith and their obedience to God and obedience to what they believed in. At, um, it, it, it's, curious, it's interesting to me how he says, just, and what more shall I say for time will fail me? Because there's so many examples throughout Scripture. This is just a handful. But of people who did what God wanted them to do. And they weren't afraid. They weren't fearful of what, what could happen to them. Because they knew and they held on to that hope that they had. That hope that they were sharing with those around them. Um, in obedience they acted. And with perseverance they followed through. Because of faith, this faith that each of them had, this, this same faith that we can have today, it's a gift from God, it's not of ourselves. And because of that faith, we have courage like they did. We have boldness, we, can, we have hope, and we have a love for others that isn't, isn't natural. I don't naturally have love for everybody. Believe it or not, it's not of me. I have this love for people because of God. And I didn't I really didn't know what love was before God. I don't think we know truly what that love is and that hope. Um, we have something to share because of this faith that we have. We have something to share with others that can change their lives, just like it did mine one day, many years ago, back in the corner over here when somebody shared Christ with me. And it can it can make a huge difference in somebody's life. Um, I have one more saint to share with you about. Um, probably many of you have heard of this book, Fox's Book of Martyrs, and it's a name you're all familiar with, but I wonder how many of us actually know who he was. So, I'm going to share with you about a man named Alban, because we're in St. Albans here. Our town is named St. Albans. Do you ever wonder who St. Alban was? Yeah. Well, I'm going to share with you. <laughs> uh, Alban lived near Viterolanium, a town in Roman Britain situated near the modern city of St. Albans in Hertfordshire on what is now park and agriculture land. He was a pagan soldier in the Roman army. Alban became the first Christian martyr in Britain and is listed as a saint. In 303, the emperor of the Eastern Roman Empire, Diocletian, published an edict against the Christians. At some point, Alban gave shelter to a Christian priest who was fleeing the authorities. So this, this Roman guy said, no more Christians. And this Roman soldier, he gave shelter to this priest that was coming through, this priest who was fleeing from the police the, the Roman guard at the time, and he gives him shelter, and he's so impressed by the priest's lifestyle and devotion, and through many, many conversations he had with them, Alban was converted to Christ and baptized. Hearing that the priest was in that vicinity, the local magistrate sent soldiers to search for him. So they were coming after this priest. As they approached Alban's cottage, he changed clothes with the priest, and wearing his hooded cloak, was arrested instead. Alban was brought before the magistrate as he was offering sacrifices to the pagan gods. Seeing that the prisoner was Alban and not the priest, the magistrate became enraged that Alban had freely offered himself to the soldiers in place of his guest. The magistrate ordered Alban to be dragged to the pagan gods and ordered the punishment for Alban that the priest would have received. So because he, he clothed himself in the priest's garments and offered himself to these people instead, he was going to receive the punishment that was due the priest, which was fitting as a Christian anyway. Um, he freely offered himself. He, where was that? Alvin, 
if Alvin, oh, it's right here. The magistrate ordered Alvin to be dragged, read that, the punishment for Alvin that the priest would have received if Alvin had indeed become a Christian. And Alvin declared, I worship and adore the true and living God who created all things. Alvin, who had voluntary given, voluntarily given himself up to the persecutors as a Christian, was not in the least afraid of the magistrate's threats. Instead, he openly declared that he would not obey the government's command. Then the magistrate said, Of what house and stock are you? Alvin replied, What business is it of yours? What lineage I am born? If, on the other hand, you desire to hear the truth of my religion, now that I know, now know that I am now a Christian and devote myself to Christian service. Angered even more, the magistrate ordered Alvin to be beaten, hoping that he would recant. But Alvin patiently endured the torture. Realizing that Alvin was determined to confess Christ, he ordered him to be beheaded. Alvin was taken out of town to the top of the hill across the river and was beheaded. Now the place where St. Alvin's Cathedral now stands. About the year 304. Alvin thus became the first martyr in Britain. The second was the executioner that was supposed to kill him who after hearing his testimony became a Christian on the spot and refused to follow the order. The third was the priest who after hearing that Alvin had been arrested in place hurried to the court to turn himself in to save Alvin. That was, that was a man who was, was the very first martyr he was the very first martyr in Britain. He was also the first recorded Christian that we know of. And he laid down his life because he had no fear of what the government at that time would do to him. He had no fear of what it would cost him. He just knew that God was ultimately his savior. If he was to die, he would be okay because he'd be with Christ. He had no fear. He had boldness that comes from his faith. And the, the testimony that that was, so much just to the executioner, that the executioner refused to kill him and became saved as well. And he was the second martyr to die for accepting Christ and professing Christ in that country. And it's interesting that that is the... That was the first martyr and the first Christian. And then less than 100 years later, we have St. Patrick, who did his studying in that very country. And then went on to spread the word to all of Ireland and, and be a missionary to those people. St. Alban's story. Now you know where our town is named from. St. Alban's. Uh, each of us has our own mission field. Each of us who have accepted Christ have a job to do, a specific, a specific task for each one of us. And God wants to use us in a great way. He wants to use each and every one of us, whether it's our friends or our family or just the strangers on the street. Whatever God has for us, we just need to have the faith and trust Him that He's going to take care of us so that we can go out there and share His Word with other people, that we can share about His love. Each one of us has a testimony that we can share who have accepted Christ. We know the difference that it's made in our lives. And we have, we have no reason to fear sharing that with other people. Um, whether it's at our favorite restaurant, which I tell the kids in youth group, that's one of the easiest ways to share is when you go to a restaurant, just pray before you eat. Because how often do you see somebody praying before they eat at a restaurant? Probably not very often, but that's, that's a way of opening a door. Somebody might think, hey, they're different, but it might be in a good way. And you get to share if they ask questions or anything like that. Or sometimes they'll come over and interrupt you with their food, and you get to keep on going. But you get to share with them. That's okay. We don't mind. You can pray with us. You know? They, it, it's an opening, an open door for somebody. Um, it doesn't matter. It, it, it just doesn't matter who we share with. Just if God tells you to share with somebody, just do it. Just have that faith and that trust that it's going to be okay. 
They might not like you, or they might think you're weird, but they won't hurt you. They won't kill you like they did St. Alvin, or the executioner himself. It'll be okay. We can share that gift with other people, and we, we might not see them come to salvation right away, but even if you're just planting a seed, it's worth it. Nothing that, nothing that we've talked about tonight is easy. Nothing about it is comfortable. Nothing about following God is easy, but it's worth it. It's always worth it. We heard today of those who risked everything to share the good news, whether it was their, their homeland they left and stepped out into strange places or gave up their life or all these other things. What are we willing to give up? Our comfort or our, our reputation, maybe? If people think we're weird, it's okay. Because ultimately, what God thinks of us is what's most important and the impact that we'll make on some. Uh, so I encourage us this, this week as we go, go about doing our things, um, just keep that in mind that each one of us are a missionary sharing with somebody. And when we have that attitude, it'll affect how we go day to day and how we deal with cashiers and how we, how we deal with anybody. Um, just that we're a missionary in our own missionary fields. Um, Again, today was a day originally intended to honor St. Patrick and to pray for missionaries. So let's do that this week as well as we, as we think about that. Pray for the missionaries. Pray for the persecuted church. All these people all over the world that are sharing the good news and some of, many of them suffering for it. We have it, it, makes it makes us realize how easy we have it here in America. And... Just, just keep them in your prayers this week. And with that, we'll close. If you could stand, we'll pray together. And we'll finish. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you that we can come and worship you. And we thank you for, Lord, just the people that were in our lives that shared your love with us. The, the people that didn't worry about what people would think about them or anything like that. Lord, they just trusted you completely, and we thank you for all the examples that you've given us in your word. We thank you for your word and the encouragement that it is for us, Lord, um, as we try to, to live our lives pleasing to you. And, Lord, I just pray that you would help us, give us boldness and courage as we go and share your word with others, Lord. We, we pray that we would keep you at the forefront of our mind in all that we do and all that we say. In Jesus' name, amen.